250 Gemstones Culture represents a nation of people that strive for excellence and greatness every single day. We are more than journalism. We are a revolution. Come on, come on, let's kick this door down and let everybody know we up in here. Welcome to the 250 Gemstones News TV channel. I am your host, Michael T. Porter, and I'm bringing the news to your ass like no other. This is a channel that represents a nation of people that strive for excellence and greatness every single day. I have another bomb news segment for y'all, but before I begin, y'all hit that like button, that subscribe button, that share button, hit that notification bell so you know when I'm dropping. If you'd like to support the channel, support the movement, cash app, dollar sign, Michael U.S., I got to get that Spotify going. I don't know. I, I'm having trouble uploading this weekend. I'm going to do some research and see how I'm going to get them things going because uh, 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 I'm trying to hit all platforms. I, I got to be seen. We, 250, we got to be seen. We are gemstones, baby. We are rare. They are not like us. In the words of Kendrick, we are, 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 are diamonds in the rough, right? intellectual we beautiful people we we carry ourselves with a certain decorum with certain elegance express uh, uh our intellect and we can have fun while doing it we can get a little ignorant we can get a little ignorant and there's one ignorant bastard that thank god he is off the streets a man out there who has groomed a 13 year old girl got her pregnant and then deleted her and it's just very unfortunate that this baby didn't even have a chance. She didn't even graduate junior high. There's monsters lurking. And my biggest question, where are the parents? Let's dive into this story. What an, Man, I hope they whoop his ass. 250, we already know what's going to happen. He's going to get his ass whooped. Check this story. Let's see right here. And I got couple, uh, some video, too. This is according to lawandcrime.com. He was searching for ways to abort the baby. Man murdered 13-year-old girl after he got her pregnant. Cops say article written by David Harris. Shout out David Harris for bringing us this article and bringing the awareness that there are still monsters and creeps out there and we got to protect our babies. This is him right here. This nigga right here. Look at him. Jarvis Butts. Michigan Sex Offender Registry, right? Naziah Harris. Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Lil Mama right there. Michigan authorities on Thursday announced the arrest of a 41, this nigga's 41, 41 year old man who they say murdered a 13 year old girl after learning he impregnated her with his child. Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy said her office charged Jarvis Butts with first degree murder, criminal sexual conduct in the second degree and possession of child sexually abusive material in the disappearance and suspected death of Naziah Harris in Detroit. Shout out Detroit. Detroit, y'all stay on alert. There's creeps out there. Naziah's grandmother reported her missing on January 9th after she never came home from school. She was last seen getting off the bus but not far from the home on the city's east side. Detectives later learned she met up with Butts after school. Witnesses saw the pair together, Worthy said. Later that night, Butts checked into a local hotel room. Naziah was never seen or heard from again, Worthy told reporters at a press conference. Not from her family, not from her schoolmates, not from her friends, not from her social media, where she was extremely active with her friends, not from her teacher. So she's on social media and nobody picked this up this man was doing? Where's her parents? I'm like, damn. Authorities in the ensuing months con conducted a sprawling investigation to the girl's disappearance by reviewing videos, interviewing witnesses, and going through phone records. Although they have not found Naziah's body, Worthy said that they are confident she is dead. Her social media went dark. She never returned to school, nor contacted any family or friends. She also missed what would have been her 14th birthday on September 16th. The investigation unveiled, Butts began grooming Naziah in 2022 and started sexually assaulting her shortly thereafter, according to Worthy. In the weeks leading up to the disappearance, Naziah learned she was pregnant and told Butts, the father, about it, cops said. He was seeking ways to have 
an abortion where he said there were also sexually explicit photos of her on his phone, her police. He knew she was pregnant. We know that he was also searching for ways to abort the baby. As detectives dug into Butts' past, they learned that Butts had allegedly targeted other girls. Prosecutors also filed charges against Bus in cases involving two other girls who were under the age of 13. Wow, he's been doing this. Authorities say Bus sexually abused a girl, now 20, between 2012 and 2024, and another girl, now 13, between 2015 and 2017. He's charged with criminal sexual conduct in both cases. Let's play a little video, and I'm about to jump on this nigga ass, and I'm about to jump on the court system, because this nigga should never have been left out. Let's play a little bit of this clip. Sorry about that. I used to be able to do everything with no notes. I can't do it anymore. Let's watch a little bit, y'all. I'm going to jump the time. I'm ready to go off. Like this? Okay. Okay. No problem. Take your time. Thank you all for coming today. I want to start out this morning by introducing those that stand with me to my far right, left, and your right, and who you are. Matthew Makepeace with the SBU unit at Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, Tina Ripley. Let's start in the background. Matt and, Tip, Matt and Tina will be trying the case. And good morning, Louisa Capolis. I'm also with the Special Victims Unit, the Deputy Chief. And good morning, Kelly Gleason. I'm the Chief of the Special Victims Unit. Good morning, Chief White. Good morning, Lieutenant Amber Robinson, Homicide Mission Person. Sergeant Shannon Jones, Homicide Mission Person. Thank you. I have spent decades of my career looking at pictures of murdered people. When I was trying homicide cases for six straight years, in, as an assistant prosecutor, I would spend hours thinking about the victim whose case I was getting ready to try, wondering how they spent their last weeks, their last days, their last hours, and their last minutes of their lives. What were they thinking about? Did they know that the end was near? And if it was someone they knew, what must, have they, been, what must they have been thinking as they were shot, stabbed, or whatever mechanism of death was used? And now this them with by the person they knew or loved. I can't imagine the the it's jumping a little bit. I'm gonna get to the meat and potatoes. Uh, it's not mine. It's uh this, the way they recorded it. That goes through their minds. But it's always, always a thousand times worse when the person is a child or a baby, someone in the dawn of their lives who haven't begun to live their lives. The picture behind me is of Zania, and that will always be haunting because it was taken just a short time before the evidence shows that she was never seen or heard from again. It was taken by Nazaya herself, a selfie. That's the last known picture that we know about of her. And it was pointed out to me by one of the detectives on this case and by one of the prosecutors. She is smiling and waving and saying hello, but little did she know that she was really saying goodbye. We will provide to you later a very skeleton timeline of the time right before her death, before and after. Of course, the detail would be provided in court. The evidence shows overwhelmingly in this case that she is in fact deceased. The last time she was seen alive was January the 9th of this year, 2024, mm. almost nine months ago. Her missing status was reported to the Detroit Public School Police Department by her grandmother on that very day when she never returned home from school. And again, that was January the 9th, 2024. In early month. February of 2024, the case was turned over to the Detroit Police Department. Frankly, that should have happened right away. But they began investigating immediately. The evidence would further show that through text messages, through text messages that we know and that we have, Zania and this defendant were going to meet after school on January the 9th. We know that she did indeed meet up with the defendant that we're charging in this case. We also know that several people close to Mr. Butts, who we were charging later, saw them together in several different locations, people that he knew well. We have evidence that at 9.30 p.m. on that day that Mr. Butts checked into a motel and the Zania was never seen or heard from again. Not from her family, 
not from her okay. schoolmates, not from her friends, not from social media where she was extremely active with her friends. Not so that's what I just read. But I want to see uh, speed it up a little bit. By our children, things can still happen and still very go, go very wrong despite our best efforts. This can happen to good watchers of children. But we must always ask ourselves at the end of each and every day, was I right by each member of my household in terms of their safety? Did I do right by my children? Now, of course, Mr. Butts is presumed innocent and less than until he was he's found guilty on each and every crime and count that we have charged today. We have been told this morning that the arraignment will be tomorrow, we think at 10.30 a.m. in the morning, but we don't have confirmation of that yet. But the arraignment, we are told, will happen tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Chief. I'll switch places. Good morning. This is one of the most difficult cases uh, that I have been a part of, uh, and I'm just so very thankful to the detectives and the investigators of homicide. Uh, the tragedies that happened to this little girl uh, touches each and every one of us, uh, and unfortunately, um, she lost her life at the hands of someone who should have been concerned about her safety. Uh, I just want to take a couple moments and thank Madam Prosecutor and her team for the amazing work, uh, the commitment, the hours that they put into this work. I want to thank our major crimes, missing persons, homicide, specifically Sergeant Jones uh, and Lieutenant Amber Roberson. When I when I tell you the days and hours, even our Board of Police Commissioner Tamler, Tamara Liberty Smith, who was out making those decisions for our children, keep them out of harm's way. We are not pointing out anything that someone did wrong. We just want to make sure people do a lot more things right. Uh, and again, Madam Prosecutor, thank you and your team for the work. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, let me get a picture up of her. And then uh, this is so bizarre. This is so just crazy to me. Oh, her mother is alive. Oh, let me see if I can get a picture. Would y'all like my opinion? Would y'all like some of this 250 Gemstones News TV commentary? Well, of course you, that's why your ass is here. 13 years old and looking at some of these pictures, she was, my opinion, parents have to be held accountable. In order for this girl to be out, you would have to know. I don't. When I was baby, when I was with my nieces and nephew, I knew where their little butts were every moment of the day. Now, but they were really little. Now, when you get older, I understand that they move around. But in order for this girl. Even if she she was groomed, right? Meaning uh, he persuaded her, he abused her. But it takes time to do that. So that time she was with this man and we have cell phones. Her mama wasn't calling. Where is this girl's mama? Where is this girl's mama? That's the first thing. Everybody don't want to blame because, but we're going to have to uh, hold somebody accountable. Look at this picture right here. This is the this is the creep that did what he did on the on the with the, with the young lady, and I'm gonna find her mama. I think that's a mama right there. So let's find, let's get to the mom. I'm gonna get to these pictures because she's are she's taking pictures as if she's grown, right? So I don't know if this is due to the grooming. These are not pictures a 13 year old should be taking. Now she looks innocent right here. I'm not saying it's nobody's fault. I'm just saying. I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking parents, if you out there, how do you not know where your child is at at 5 p.m. after school? During the time he was grooming her, he had to have time to do it. So that time when he was doing it to her, 
where was the mother? Like, how do you not know where your child is? Me, I'm just asking, how do you not know where your child is? How? Let's see, this is her mother. This is her mom. If y'all remember a couple months ago, a little 13 year old girl by the name of Zaya Harris had went missing from her school bus and haven't been seen since. There was allegedly a video of her screaming, help me, help me, coming from a basement. It wasn't confirmed if it was her or not, but it was stated that it was. There is an update in her case. She was found unalive, but they have yet found the body that old man he does come and tell okay hold on i'm trying to see her mom you know what the case of that missing okay first of okay is this her mom hold on y'all got that because it's one i seen her mom I believe this is her mom. Because it says she was living with her grandma. Family gathered to call attention to man charges in case of 13-year-old Messiah Harris. is according to odyssey.com. It says, relative, is this her mom? Where is Anaya? Where is Naziah Harris? I keep saying Zanaya. Where is Nazaya? So is this her mom? I'm trying to figure, where is her mom? So it keeps saying uh, friends and family. This all comes about two years since Harris' great aunt, Janelle Smith, filed a report chapter said over concerns about child sexual abuse activity in the home where her niece was living. And now since I found out there's at least seven other CPS reports saying pretty much the same thing I said, Smith Hollins. Oh, so they did know about it. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Oh, here we go. I told y'all, how do you not know? So they knew about See, The way they portrayed it, that first clip, they're making it seem like, you know, we're not going to blame. No, we need to blame. Because see, I was, I like to check myself. That's why like I'm asking parents, how do you not know? Because I know where my child, I'm not a father, but that's why I'm asking the parents out there because when I had my nieces, had my nephews, I know where their bus at or at all time because they're my responsibility. I gotta check on check on them. And now it's saying that this guy, well, first it's saying that the auntie knew. Where is this girl's mama? I'm going back so y'all can look at this too. This all comes about. Let me back it up. See right here, this all comes about two years since Harris' great aunt, Jernell smith Holloway filed a report with Child Protective Services over concerns about child sexual abuse activity in the home where her niece was living. So this is the niece, I'm sorry, this is the aunt, and she called CPS on her sister. Where is Naziah's mother? Where's her father? Got to blame the parents on this one. We have to blame the parents. I got the information right here. Y'all put my face up. Y'all can see it with me. Yeah, because they didn't do nothing. Because they didn't do nothing. They already knew this girl was uh, being abused and they did not a damn thing. A cousin in town from Texas who goes by Roxy explained a sign that family made that read silence is violence. Was her mama in on this? Where is her? <laughs> Silence is violent because there's been too much silence, too much silence. She said, things are being reported. Nothing was being done. Nobody was saying anything. And now it has turned into what we as a family think is violence. Speak up. So the family knew this was going on. It's the, I told you, you gotta, it's the parents suck. It's the parents fault. And shout out to the auntie. Hold on, y'all give a shout out to the auntie. 
for standing up for her little niece because the, the auntie can only do so much. She got them involved. Shout out to the auntie who brought awareness. Shout out to that auntie that brought awareness because she said she reported and nothing happened. Uh, family members are being silent about this. She said family members are being silent about this. She brought this awareness. So so I'm like I'm saying, I'm not stupid. I knew somebody knew what was going on. She's 13. How the hell you not know? Now let's get to the uh whoo, got some sorry ass parents. It goes back, it starts at home. Read a little bit more. I'm gonna go to the, this girl's pictures. In the report on Monday, Detroit News said two police sources confirmed that a man considered a suspect in the case is 41 year old Wayne County jail inmate who's accused of sexually abusing a seven year old girl. He remains behind bars, charged in April with two counts of criminal sexual abuse of a person under 13. Smith Holland said she wants to believe her niece ran away from the ran away from the home where she was living with that suspect, but lately she's losing hope. So why is she running away from home? Her mom didn't call her? Man, just imagine getting that phone call, never hearing from your niece again. Sounds like the, the auntie, Miss Holland, is more involved than the parents. While Smith Holland is glad the suspect is behind bars, she and other family members are unhappy that no charge has been filed by the prosecutor in the case of her great niece, which is why she's out in front of the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice keeping Nazaya name at least alive campbell said man oh man so the auntie been reporting there's been this been going on they knew if the auntie knew then the parents knew so man this is crazy hold on Cause they said she was in with her grandmother. We suspected him. Hold on, I got y'all. Family still say this girl, she's been gone since January. Now, the auntie knew something was up. Okay, here's a Harris. Her father passed away. Mervyn Jennings passed away over the summer, months after his daughter went missing. So he was alive. So there's, there's something going on. There's a spirit working on this family because the daddy passed away. She passed away. So he passed away after she went missing. Where was he? Sound like it was a broken home. Sound like uh, the mother couldn't control her. Let me see. The father passed away, Mervyn Jennings. Mervyn Jennings passed away over the summer, months after his daughter went missing. So he didn't prevent it uncongested had a congestive heart failure he was already sick and got sicker going out looking for her. so he was looking for her so where's the mother because they said she was living with her grandmother so why isn't she with the parents this is uh there's a lot of mess going on here a lot of mess going on here but i want to get to this picture because my biggest point is these cell phones are can be angelic or satanic and uh it's all about how a person uses it because her picture now I don't know because she was groomed. I don't I don't know if it's because she didn't have parental guidance. Well, I'm sure now it's confirmed she didn't have no parental guidance. She's taking pictures as if she's 20, 21. She's only 13, right? And she's I'm uh, pretty sure it's, it's a combination of 
lack of responsibility from the parents, lack, lack of provision from the parents, a lack of guidance from the parents, a lack of love from the parents. So she saw this man and maybe he tricked her into believing that he loved her. Maybe he tricked her into believing that uh, whatever she was feeling a void, he can feel it for her, not knowing that she was sleeping with a demon. This man is a demon, right? So she more than likely she has daddy issues. Sound like her daddy's much older. And uh, I want to y'all take a look at these pictures here. Now, I have no daughters, and I understand that girls are the prettier of the species, right? I'm pretty sure my kids are gonna be handsome. So just kids in general, girls are prettier the species because their value and that's how god made them they're more beautiful than uh boys it takes us time we're more the ugly duckling we don't really get into our uh in our beautiful selves until later on in life so our beautiful selves come much later their beautiful selves come much earlier i understand but she they said she was very active on social media now these pictures she's only 13 and her pictures are borderline seductive. And like I said, it's a combination of her broken home and this man grooming her. Now, these pictures aren't too bad, but she was sending certain videos to this man, this 41-year-old man, which is inappropriate. Now, she is covered, but she's trying to look cute as possible. You know, she's feeling herself. She's coming. She's becoming a young lady. I get it. I get it. But them, these phones are very dangerous kids don't understand about invitations see when you get older you understand that you can't have everybody around you got to protect your mind you got to protect your spirit you have to protect uh your mental your, your spirit your mind your emotions you got to expect your and more importantly your physical you get to because you let people into your lives they, you don't know what kind of energy, you don't know where their mindset, you don't know their intention, you don't know their motives. And by her being so young, he knew that he, like, he understood that when children are this young, they don't understand stand the severity of one mistake of allowing somebody into your life can cost you your life. As you become older, as you become wiser, you get a better understanding of people. You know, most people ain't shit, right? So most people have demonic energy. Most people um, have evil intent. So you got to do your best to protect people. Uh, as you get older, you maneuver through this world a whole lot different. You move different. You move with great caution. You, you're you very, very calculated. Even when you have conversations with people, like even when they're telling you something, you can read between the lines a whole lot better. Like, I hear you, but what you're actually saying is this. And I believe this is what you're actually saying, you know. Uh, you're judging people by their actions. So all of these things a uh, child can't pick up on because they have no life experience. Did, in my book, the parents have failed. Uh, now, I know he, uh, the father was sick. I ain't going to beat up on too bad, but I'm really searching for this mother because it really ain't too much about the mother. And one, something on TikTok, uh, that was her aunt's boyfriend or something, but I, that's not, I don't believe that's true because the aunt called CPS. CPS, her family initially failed her. CPS and I've been covering. I've been doing the news a long time now. I, I'm a veteran now. Your boy is a veteran, and CPS is one of the worst organizations out there. They don't do a damn thing. A lot of these cases could have been prevented. A lot of this chaos could have been prevented. Her home failed her. CPS failed her. Technology failed her. The police, uh, not the police, the justice system failed her because this man already had cases. Why is he out in the street? This is why I'm a big advocate. If you are a hustler, you're getting your money, you, you're doing what you can do to get that bread. Man, middle finger to the system. Middle finger to the system unless the system giving me some goddamn money because every time a man trying to get him some goddamn money, they really throw football numbers at a nigga, right? But if you go touch a child, nothing happens. CPS, nothing happened. The auntie reported she believes somebody's touching on her, her, her niece, her great niece, nothing happens. The parents ain't doing their job. Nothing happened. So this girl was thrown into this world and she didn't even make it to her 14th birthday. She didn't even make it to her middle school graduation. She didn't even make it to her high school graduation. A baby. She didn't even make it to her high school graduation. No college graduation. No children. No life. She's 
done. This is a messed up world. That's why 250, we got to come in here and put push that positivity. We have to push intellect. We have to push analytics. We have to push um, God. We have to push Christ. We have to push the Holy Spirit. We have to push the word of God because the world needs it. There's a lot of demonic people walking around that's controlled by lust, that's controlled by whatever sadistic um motives that they have they can't control it's up to us to get that word out hey you be careful watch your surroundings you know these damn phones are getting a lot of people indicted getting a lot of people messed up these phones i'm i'm an advocate having i don't don't have any kids but i'm saying like it's tough being a parent today especially with these phones these phones are access to demonic things a lot of demonic things on these phones you know, from dating apps to creeps to people creeping on your uh, Instagram to the, the government all in your shit to holy things. You know, you can learn about God. You can learn how to get yourself some money. You can learn this. We're living in the information. There's so much information, but with all that inf- good information, there's bad information. With all that um, positive things that's on these phones, there's a lot of negative. There's a lot of creeps that use these devices to get to our little ones but y'all flood my comments flood 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 my comments y'all let me know what do y'all think about nazia harris being grown at an early age unalive by the age of 13 by a 41 year old man out there in detroit 250 capital g i'm gone